Hi, I'm Misty Velasky, and this is Ojai Valley News In-Depth. Joining us today in the studio is Joe Connor, attorney for Golden State Water Company. Thank you for joining us. Glad to, Misty. Thank you for having me. Yes, and you were at Monday night's meeting, uh, which was uh, emotions running high, to say the least there. Uh, so, so tell us, um, was, the, was uh, the reaction from the public something you guys were expecting? Oh, I think so. I, we, have, uh, we knew going into the meeting that, um, well, our expectations were that we would have a good crowd. We did. Uh, our expectations were that uh, there would be a number of people that have been very vocal about the interest in trying to take over our business in Ohio. We expected them there. Uh, what we really wanted to do, though, in the meeting, the purpose of the meeting, was to tell really the, the full story when it comes to uh, what is an eminent domain case, what will the community expect, uh, what would Casitas Municipal Water District expect uh, in terms of the length, the cost, the results, and, uh, and also to try to point out where OHI Flow was uh, where we agreed with their report uh, that they've been promoting and where we clearly disagreed. And mm -hmm. that's what we tried to do and give the public an opportunity to be heard. Mm -hmm. And uh, is, is this uh, process of eminent domain something that um, your parent company, American States Water Company or Golden State Water Company has ever gone through before? They have not gone through a full condemnation. Occasionally there'll be uh, a community that might uh, inquire as to whether or not they could take over or uh, negotiate a, a purchase. But in most instances, it's very rare that uh, either Golden State, American States, or any other investor-owned water utility actually will face a condemnation. It's not common. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, the reason for this in Ohio, and the reason for all of this frustration is the fact that we look at the Golden State Water Company rates for individuals as so much higher than, say, Casitas or uh, Miner's Oaks Water. So can you explain to us exactly why these rates are so much more expensive, in some cases double or even triple? Well, I'm really not the best person to explain the difference in the rates. Um, my job is to defend the company and explain what occurs with an eminent domain. Sure. Uh, but I, I can say this, generally it, it's not uncommon for rates of an investor-owned utility to be higher than an adjacent uh, municipal district. Mm -hmm. uh, that occurs across the country and one of the reasons, the main reasons for that is that in, in the case of an investor-owned utility, the costs that are incurred to operate and keep the system running and to rebuild the system, maintain the system, uh, are reflected primarily in your bill. It's, that's, it's based on cost of service. And I know that the public, they say, well, we hear that all the time, but still, why is that the case? Well, in the case of a municipal district or a government-owned utility, more often than not, their rates are subsidized. And when I say that, they may be subsidized by property tax. Uh, and uh, in the case of Casitas, uh, I'm not specifically familiar with all the details of their financial statement, but I knew, do know in general that some of their revenue comes from property taxes, some of their revenue comes from recreation fees, and some of their revenue comes from other charges that we don't have. So it's very difficult to compare one system to another without going into depth and to see what their true sources of revenue are. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, you know, when, when someone sees the bills and the comparison, it's very easy sure. to, to, um, to go one way or another. Uh, another question I have is, when we're looking at things like electricity and gas, you don't see a meter charge. However, with Golden State Water Company, you do have a meter charge, and that's where a lot of people are taking offense here. So can you explain why there is a need for that meter charge? Well, it's really not a meter charge. It's a fixed monthly service charge, mm -hmm. and again, that's very common. Um, I think Casitas also has a fixed monthly service charge. We pay uh, Casitas uh, uh, $348, I believe, for a uh, per month for a four-inch meter because we buy water from Casitas to supplement our supply. And one of the claims in the Ojai flow report is that Casitas sells us water at their cost. Well, that's totally incorrect. Um, so. What a minimum charge will do, though, is pay a portion of your fixed cost, but it also will uh, regulate the, the level of income as it comes in, so it doesn't completely fluctuate with volumetric charges, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. In Jefferson County, Alabama, I'm working right now on a sewer system. 
they didn't have a fixed monthly fee, so their revenues would go up and down. And it's very hard to plan from a budgetary standpoint unless you have a fixed monthly charge. Mm -hmm. And that's what this is. It's a rate structure that's sure. approved by the UC. And uh, another thing that is a big concern is we're seeing infrastructure uh, problems here around Ojai. You know, quite often we see water mains burst and things like that. So one of the things that um, we're hearing Golden State Water Company has said that, you know, reasons we are increasing our rates is because we are trying to improve the infrastructure. If that is in fact the case, how much money is it going to cost for the improvement of this infrastructure? Is there a timeline there? And when will we see this come up? Sure. Um, again, I don't have all that information for you today. Uh, that would be more company specific. But I've seen the numbers. Approximately 15% of the ma major distribution lines in this community, in our system, are uh, planned. There's a plan for replacement of those over the next 10 years, I believe. And, and so there is a plan. We can tell you which streets that this is anticipated to go into, which ones we anticipate to fix and correct this year. I will say that the improvements that have been made have shown a significant improvement in the unaccounted for water percentage in our system. Mm -hmm. That's the water that's not metered, that we just lose. Uh, in most instances across the country, 10%, if you have a 10% unaccounted for water in your system, that's a good system. In this instance, the improvements that have been made over the past two to three years have caused our unaccounted for water percentage to go almost to 10%. It's very close to, well, it's 10.9, I believe, mm -hmm. right under 11%. But we've reduced our unaccounted for water percentage significantly, and it will continue to, to be reduced as we make those necessary uh, improvements. Is there a specific timeline though? I mean, for example, are we going to say in the next 15 years we'll, we'll have everything updated? Because I know that there are several sure. of the pipelines that are 80 plus years old. Yeah, and again, I can't give you that specific timeline. We'll provide that for you. But there is a timeline uh, and it has been submitted to the PUC. We, the good thing about investor-owned utilities, they have a plan mm -hmm. and they have a capital plan. And so you're not shooting in the dark. You know what needs to be done, and they have a procedure for doing it. Now, one of the things that's important in this condemnation effort um, is that no matter who owns this system, those changes and improvements will have to be made. Sure. Uh, another thing that we agree with when it comes to the flow report and, and their statements is that there's not a quality issue mm -hmm. or a service issue. One of the ladies that spoke uh, very eloquently the other night at our hearing, at our meeting, uh, was was saying how quickly our crews would come and fix, and they worked all night. And, and again, she was saying, well, that was very expensive. Why don't they just replace the line? Well, we're trying to do that. Mm -hmm. And you can't do it all at once. Uh, Casitas doesn't do it all at once. They have their own plan. Uh, so that's, that's important to note. No matter who owns this system, those improvements will have to be made and factored into the analysis. Sure. Uh, and speaking of Monday night's meeting, one of the things that uh, you mentioned there is that Golden State Water Company is not in this to sell systems. That's correct. Uh, however, um, in, in some research that we were looking at, the parent company did sell uh, Chaparral water out in Arizona uh, earlier this year, uh, which is many more customers. I think it's something like 13,000 customers. Mm -hmm. So under what circumstances would you be willing to sell Golden State Water Company or, or would you? Uh, the answer to that is no. Uh, and I'll tell you the, what I know. They didn't retain our firm uh, to handle that sale. I hope they do next time if they have another transaction that they need some assistance on. But uh, what happens is that if OHI was the only system that Golden State operated and owned in California and the regulatory environment was not conducive to in, in, attracting investment, then yes, this system would be for sale, just like the analysis was in Arizona. In Arizona, the system there that was a that was their only system, so you didn't have um, all the other systems like we do in California for economies of scale. In this instance, this system has been we've been operating this system for years, decades. This is not one that we're going to turn over. Mm -hmm. 
uh, one final thing. Is there anything, uh, any sort of common ground that we can sort of reach, um, whether it be the elimination of the meter charges, which I, I'm, I'm guessing probably is a no. Uh, is there any common ground we can find between Golden State Water Company and Ojai Flow? Is, is there any sort of um, rate decrease we can expect? Is, is mm-hmm. there anything like that? Well, I don't, I don't think as far as Ojai Flow negotiating directly with Golden State. Uh, with all due respect, they're well-intentioned individuals, but their objective is to convince someone to spend millions of dollars to take over our system. And they have that right. As a property owner in this country, under the federal constitution and the state constitution, we also have the right to object to that, which we will, and also to seek the fair market value for our system. Oh, flow, and folks, let me stress this. They state in their report that Golden State is entitled to the fair market value of their assets. We totally agree with that statement. Then they go in and say, well, what fair market value is, is rate base. That is not fair market value in California. Rate base is the original cost, less book depreciation of what, what you're showing on your records. It's much like you buying your house 10 years later and it's depreciated down and or better yet someone giving you your house inheriting your house and then you selling that house and saying oh well since I didn't pay anything for it or it's fully depreciated down then I'm not entitled to what it's worth today on the market that's not the case Uh, and the other thing that they have not valued are our water rights and that's a very significant issue in California, as you know better than I, the scarcity of those rights. And so when you factor all that in, their premise is flawed because they have not accurately valued what this system will cost and then what the opportunity costs are for the community that are lost. Mm -hmm. I think we are willing to work with the people. We want to do that. There are some things that we may be able to accomplish together. Uh, but we want that opportunity. Sure. And, of course, uh, people can find out more and ask more questions November 11th when you're having another meeting. That's correct. I'm not sure if that's the right date, but uh, we are having another public meeting. I'm sure it will be announced and published in your newspaper. Well, thank you very much. Joe, I appreciate you being here and taking the time. Well, thank you, Misty. Look forward to it. Be glad to answer any questions you have in the future. Thank you very much. I'm Misty Velasky. This is Joe Connor. This has been Ojai Valley News In Depth.